Hey guys, I'm Silhouette, and this is Silhouette Storytellers. Welcome back to episode number three. I'm so glad to have you guys here with me today. I originally thought this was going to be a super short episode, <laughs> but today we're going to talk about storytelling and the power of words and kind of what that means to me. And I know if I am not very careful, we could talk about this for hours. So first off, um, if you haven't checked it out, check out my TikTok account, uh, Still Silhouette. I tell my story. Um, I think I kind of mentioned this in the first episode, but TikTok allowed me the freedom to tell my story, to share quotes and poems and all the words that I find or that find me. Um that have changed my life. So my personal story, and I'm sure I will get into the nuts and bolts of this along the way throughout this podcast, but I had a really weird childhood. My parents were bikers, and that was an interesting adventure. I have been in love a lot, too much, I think. Um, Got my heart broken a couple of times in the last year. I... Uh, buried the love of my life. So TikTok allowed me to share those emotions, right? Because it's not, it's not exactly what happened. It's how what happened made you feel. And I genuinely think that's why people find my audio so relatable. Because I express emotion. You know, I grew up in a family of storytellers. Stories passed down through generations. And when I was a little girl, my dad, (laughs) I was probably way too young to hear some of the stories, but I'd lie in bed at night and he'd sit next to me and he'd tell me scary stories about mountain magic, lost love, people that went into the woods and never came back. It was magic. And funny enough, those stories stick with me forever. Sometimes I think I can still hear his voice telling me about the old woman in the woods who cured the ailments of the local people and and was always surrounded by familiars. And then one day she just disappeared. And they say if you're really quiet on a moonless night, you can still hear her cackling in the distance. Yeah, those stories stick with me. But as I grew up, I made my own stories. And I think we all do, right? We live life and things happen. I've got plenty of drunk stories. (laughs) Nights I can't remember. Friends I can't forget, right? I think that's how the quote goes. Those stories matter, even if we don't tell them to our parents. (laughs) Mm. Stories of picnics with people that matter. Stories of playing video games with your best friends. Every one of those stories matters. So I always encourage people to tell their own story. You don't have to do it like I do. Just tell it. Someone will listen. I recently found a poem, put it in an audio on TikTok, about telling your story. And some are going to love it, and some are going to hate it. But once you put it out there, there are all these voices that start to whisper, me too. I felt that. I needed to hear that today. When I get a comment that says, I needed this, brings tears to my eyes every time. Because that means that I am not alone. I'm not alone in the heartbreak and the anguish. I'm not the only one who ever got her heart broke. I'm not the only one who is trying to find love and trust and honesty in this world. It's pretty awesome. 
So tell your story. I do want to leave you guys with another story. <laughs> Something that uh, has just stuck with me over the years. See, years ago, I worked a job where I had to be at work at 5 a.m. And so at 7 a.m. every day, I would go smoke. I'd get in my car and drive across the street next to this bank. It's kind of a rural area. I'd sit in my car and listen to music, kind of get ready for the day. And every morning at 7 a.m., this guy would come out of the bank and he'd go to the flagpole and he would gently unfold this flag and run it up the pole. Every single day, Monday through Saturday. And I watched him do it every single morning. And it's like we shared this secret bond. That man didn't even know I existed, but for some reason, that little flag, the way he gently unfolded it with respect and regard, that flag meant everything to me. It meant that the world was still a good place. That no matter how chaotic things got, we still live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. That no matter what kind of chaos is going on in the world, that flag is still going to go up. I don't know why, but it meant everything in the world to me. It still does. I stopped working there several years ago, but I still imagine that man goes out every morning, gently unfolds that flag, and runs it up the pole, and then goes back inside. Because life goes on. As always, guys, thanks for listening.